Hi there, it's Molly Reynolds and you're watching The Unicorn in the Room, where we examine the habits of the world's most innovative unicorns and learn how to use our own personal magic to achieve success. Well, we're here at the Bitly office today and it's kind of a happening place. There's a lot going on here. And we're really excited to speak with CEO Mark Josephson about what it takes to build a real business in this age of technology. Take a look. Mark, thank you so much for having us at the Bitly office today. Thanks so much for coming. Absolutely. I know there's a lot of marketers watching uh, right now that use you every day. I know I do whenever I need to post a link. But your business is much bigger than that. Can you tell us a little bit about what's really going on here sure, in this office? Yeah, absolutely. And you didn't see any elves making short links in, upstairs I in the back. I feel like I accidentally stepped on one. Yeah, we may, have a, we may have a bunch of those. <laughs> but yeah, so at Bitly we do so much more than just make links. And um, we spend so much time talking to marketers and understanding how challenging it has become for marketers to be successful. Uh, over the past 20 years as our industry has evolved, it used to be very easy for a marketer to actually see and communicate with their own customers. It was not such a complex landscape. It mm -hmm. was flat, there were no big walled gardens, and the technology was shared and the platforms were pretty obvious. Fast forward 20 years, and now every consumer is on their phone. They have average o almost three devices per person. Facebook, Apple, and Google are building behemoth amazing walled garden businesses that own customer relationships and own customer data and it's become so hard for marketers to be successful. So at Bitly what we really care about is how do we help marketers see and control their customers and own their customer data and customer experience. And we're able to do that because the link, every time you click, tap or swipe is a link, whether you see it or not, lives in every single digital channel. And it's the elemental piece of digital marketing that decides where you go next and why and how. So the link lives in email, it lives in search, it lives in display, it lives in apps, it lives in social, it lives everywhere. Every time you click tap or swipe. And so at Bitly we optimize that link so marketers can see it, control it, and decide how they want to handle their customers. And ultimately it makes it better for you as a customer because you know as a consumer you just want to see the businesses that you care about and the ads that you care well, about. Well yeah, so and, and the content that you want that you care about and the on the right device and the right browser with the right speed and the right experience, overall messaging. What this technology evolution and and, and um, revolution has been all about is about how do I help provide you with the experience that optimizes your time and gives you what you need. Because ultimately marketers don't want to send information or market stuff that their customers don't care about, right? The um, conversion rates and click-through rates and engagement rates are still really low relative to 100%, which is what they should be. Right, um, right. And so that's our goal is to get every marketer to 100% effectiveness by understanding their customers. So that brings me to my next question, and that is that the media is obsessed with these high valuation companies, these unicorn companies that generate a billion dollars in four years. Right. And you talk so much about building a real business. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about what you mean by that? Sure, and a, and a real business and a billion dollar unicorn, they're not mutually exclusive. You can be both, mm -hmm. um, and many are, and there's great examples. Um, but what I mean when I talk about building a real business is building a business that lasts and building a business that has the fundamental economics and structures inside of it about cost and about profit and about generating profit and value for um, not only consumers and shareholders and customers but everybody and actually provides a value that is long term and um, sustainable, mm -hmm. right? So the book Built to Last, right, uh, is, is an important book and story to understand uh, because particularly in, in in times when there's high growth and a lot of capital to start businesses and build businesses, the, there's, it's tempting to think short term. Mm -hmm. It's tempting to think how fast can I drive my valuation, how fast can I drive to an exit um, or some sort of event. And I've had the, the um, benefit, let's call it, of being in businesses that have failed. And one of the things that, have, that I know has driven some of that failure is a focus on the short term, not the long term. And so uh, I have nothing against companies that can become a billion dollars in four years, and I aspire to that. Um, but I aspire for that to be driven on something that is that in four years after that can be 10 billion, um, and 10 years after that can be 100 billion. Um, and to really keep your perspective on the horizon and not on the, on the next quarter, or how quickly can I drive my valuation and sell a company. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, when I talk about building a real business, it's about uh, building a company that lasts. 
Right, and so if you were going to give advice to somebody that's that's beginning a startup, yeah. that's starting a startup, starting a startup, yeah. let's get started. What what are some things that they should look for to to really assess whether this idea is a good one and how to build it out as a real business? Sure, I think you need to have a fundamental understanding of what your costs are and what your and the product is that you're selling, mm -hmm. right? So actually, I would start with understanding what problem you're solving, mm -hmm. what product are you building or selling to solve that product, and who's your buyer. So I really, when I talk to startups and entrepreneurs, I ask them about their first 10 customers. Tell me about your first 10 customers. Some don't have them yet, and some do. And once you have 10 customers, there's a pattern in there. And then you can get to 100. And then once you get to 100, you can understand what you need to do to get to 1,000. And so how, do, how can you get some, build something that 10 people are going to pay you for? I, my opinion is the day of just get a whole lot of people to use it for free, and it'll all work out. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. That, that's lightning in a bottle. It's, and it's incredibly, incredibly risky to do that. Right. So I think if you're starting something, sell something. Mm -hmm. right? Get paid for that something and figure out how you can scale that. Uh, and make sure that the math works. Make sure that the cost to build it and sell it and maintain it is less than what you're selling it for. Mark, thank you so much for this. I know that a lot of people are going to benefit from this. And if you're starting a startup, Please use Bitly. listen to this man use and use Bitly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so hey, much for you so being much, here. Mark. Appreciate it. That right there is it, entrepreneurs. It's all about building a solid foundation so that your business can see some great longevity. And for more unicornial guests, please visit our website at theunicorninthe or subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.